the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we're hanging out with Johnny, who dropped their new album in October called For Abby and has their major hit called Sabotage on it. You're based out in L.A. What's it like over there right now? I am. I'm based out in L.A., and over here, it is wild right now. I think uh, in a 10-mile radius, uh, it's just gotten super bad out here, so we're doing safe social restrictions. Everybody's staying inside. Nobody's going out unless they have to, or at least I am. I'm following that protocol, (laughs) and uh, hopefully it all dies down with the vaccines coming out, right? I know. I hope so. I think everyone's kind of hoping for that. Yeah, right. What was it like creating all of your music in your bedroom slash home studio? Um, It wasn't that much of a change because it's it's what I've already been doing for the last couple of years. Um, I think the only difference with the climate of the world was like getting adjusted to that new mindset of like, oh, this is how the world is. It's scary outside right now. And like you, you keep your friends close, you know, really talk to anyone anymore. And it, it was, you know, more about trying to find new things to get inspired by when you can't really go outside or like do things. I found that to be like the most difficult part of creating in the quarantine vibe, you know? Would you say that creating music during this pandemic at home was more comforting since you were at home or did it make it a little more kind of monotonous since you really couldn't go out as much Uh, yeah i because i'm a weirdo i took it (laughs) as more comforting because i i like already stay inside and i'm in like an old man mode and i don't really go out to parties or anything i just wake up and make music in my boxers and then go to sleep so i found it comforting but i can see for like a lot of people that it's definitely probably wasn't super comforting but i kind of like thrived in it and then every now and then i'd have a realization though of like oh yeah the world is like terrible things are happening and people are losing their jobs and their lives and then you know that was kind of a big pill to swallow every time you you know you get so used to your little bubble at your house and then you look at the news one day and you're like oh god the number keeps going up you know yeah would you consider yourself an introvert then I like, it's the weirdest thing because I feel like I'm introverted, but then everyone who knows me says that I come off very extrovert because I I love talking to people and I love going and playing shows. I love doing things. I'm just not a, when I'm home and I'm at home, I just like to like be at home. I like, I don't like to go out. I don't want to go to the parties or the bars or the the parks. I want to just sit in my little bubble and be alone you know i don't know I'm no weird. totally get it. i mean even talking with you for just the few minutes right now you seem super extroverted but i totally get just wanting <laughs> to be at home and be comfortable and not really talk to anyone well yo check it out taylor i you can come into my bubble when this is all over and then we'll all kick it you know we'll kick it <laughs> in my house i love the invitation <laughs> of course You've said that your song Sabotage was your most honest song on your album for Abby. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean by that on if uh sometimes when I'm writing songs, I feel like whether I watch a movie and get inspiration or I do something, it's like I'm writing a story. But when I wrote Sabotage, I was I was drawing the most from like my own not necessarily like the story is nonfiction but I was drawing from like my own emotions that I was feeling on the time. Like I was feeling really down at the time. I was feeling really sad at the time, feeling really broken. I just came off of tour, had a lot of drama happen on tour, recently went through a breakup. I recently moved across the country away from all my friends. I was alone, pandemic had hit. I was brand new, fresh in LA, no friends in this small, empty apartment by myself, forced to stay inside. And I knew nobody in this city and, uh, I just went in the room that day and I had all this just energy and I was like, I need to get it out. Like, this is how I'm feeling. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what I mean. It's just honest. It's like when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, God, you're a sad soul, bud. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, that is more than a perfect storm of things to make someone sad. That's a lot for someone to go through. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, because I, I packed my bags in like November, moved across the country, went on tour in January or January, February. So I'd only been in LA for about a month and half of that was moving. 
came back home like, oh, this is going to be my new life. I'm going to get a good start on it. I'll I'll get my mind free. I'll go on some walks. I'll go on some large social gatherings with people. <laughs> and then I came home to a, a, a global pandemic and a forced stay inside thing. And it was it was scary, you know, and I was by myself and I didn't know anybody out here. I never lived out here. All of my friends are like 500 miles away and my mom and my dad are miles and miles away. It was crazy. What was the best and worst part of moving across country? <laughs> um, <laughs> best part? Weather. Obviously, I was born and raised a California boy. I migrated across the country around the middle school years and I had to start dealing with the cold. But coming back to the California weather, oh, I love it. You can wear a sweatshirt when it's hot. You can wear a sweatshirt when it's cold. <laughs> Love it. Um, worst thing is, like, super on the nose. Like, I, I, I my, my best friends, like, some people that I consider, like, my family, like, people that are in my band, they, like, live in Philadelphia still. And, it, you know, it sucks that I don't see them as often now because I moved thinking, like, oh, yeah, like, I'll be home three to four months out of the year but I'm going to be touring with like my family for the rest of the year like I'll see them all the time and then now it's been a year I haven't seen them at all you know because just for safety reasons I don't want to get on a plane or anything so that was definitely the worst it was definitely an adjustment but you know I think humans are resilient and we're going to find a way and we're going to push through it and hopefully these vaccines are starting some big yeah, I mean, it's really hard to be separated from the ones you love and people you're close to. And speaking of people that you're close to, yeah. is Abby really someone you know and are close to, or is it just an idea of a person? Who's to say? I don't know. <laughs> it could be. I would say that if I was being honest, though, and not giving you a total BS answer, I'd say that the person does not exist for sure. Abby has an entity doesn't exist i would say it's like a combination of a few past relationships and then honestly like me looking in the mirror at like like i feel like some songs on that record are not like you suck you broke my heart (laughs) you're the worst it's all like kind of me and things that i'm looking in the mirror in the past of like dang like i need to get one percent better as a person every day like i've made mistakes like i'm not that good of a person sometimes like I've done some stupid things. And so I think that was important. Even though I've changed since then, it was cool to like look back and channel that and be like, let's talk about like the vice versa of the situation. Like this isn't a song about like, you suck, you broke my heart. It's like, (laughs) no, I suck and I need to work on myself. And then that's when I'll be in a happy relationship when I'm a better human. You know what? I've been in one for the last year and she's an amazing woman. And so things happen, you know? So this album was as much for someone else as it was for yourself. 100%. Your music videos are super fun and weird in all the right ways. I absolutely love the video for Honey Pie, and it has over 8 million views on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sure I make up for about 1,000 of those. What was your favorite video okay, to shoot? Okay. Uh, one, thank you. Two, favorite video to shoot is, was definitely Sabotage. Not to be like, yo, Sabotage is what we're talking about, but... <laughs> It was just fun. We're like, we got this van and we put all these cult like the world is ending like scriptures on it. We were driving around LA and people were looking at us like we were insane. Uh, I can't even tell you how many people came up to us not realizing that we weren't recording and was like, yo, like, I do not want to be involved in this. I don't want my face (laughs) involved in this. I don't want to be in this video. They thought we were filming some like crazy. I don't even know propaganda or something (laughs) and uh, that was just fun because I like messing with people's heads (laughs) what was it like going from being viral on Twitter and TikTok to then having this major record deal in just a matter of a couple of years uh yeah (laughs) crazy question and really hard um I feel like at the time now I've been signed for like a little over a a year and a half but at, at the time nearly two years ago when um, I had already been making music for like two years and it, I was getting a little bit of a groundswell but then to have that song blow up so big I I felt like I wasn't even an artist yet I hadn't even learned all my skills I wasn't even that good of a songwriter yet so like like I could write songs but I hadn't fully like unlocked that craft I was still learning things you know I'm young and being thrown into it so fast and 
this industry is very much so like a little rat race where everyone's talking about numbers and this is this that and the fifth it was cool to be in a home like interscope where they don't really do that as much they're not they're not so worried about playing the popular game and who's the most popular and they kind of just pushed me and supported me to make whatever it is that I wanted to make and so I went through a little period where I was scared and I was getting my feet in the water but then I found my my comfort I just started making art that I like and here we are now I'm going into more music this year and it's gonna be a good one out you moved to Philadelphia in your late teens before living out in LA right now did living in Philly inspire you to take on the name Johnny yeah so I lived in Philly from like 20 to 23 maybe 19 to 23 and what it originally started was I know that the term John comes from Philly and it is a crazy like I just happened to live there but I used to go by Johnny Utah that was my name I got it from the movie Point Break with Keanu Reeves and when I made my Instagram obviously that name was already taken and so I had to find a different way to spell Johnny so I spelled it Johnny Utah so I could have the at on Twitter then when I signed the Interscope Keanu Reeves got really pissed and threatened to like beat me up and he like came to my house and all this crazy stuff (laughs) so then Interscope was like yo you need to change your name and then after like two days of non-stop board meetings and figuring out what a new name is we just decided to shorten my Instagram at to Johnny like just J-A-W-N-Y because it worked and people already knew the name who followed me and uh, yeah it just happens to be a coincidence So for people who are listening and don't know what a John is, can you explain it? Uh, When I moved to Philly, my my familiarization of the word John is it is anything but time. It's anything but time. It could be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing. (laughs) You could point at something and say, pass me that John. You could say, let's go to the John. Like, oh, yeah, that one John. Remember when we met that John? Oh, hey, if we're cooking, like, yo, can you throw me that John real quick? (laughs) It's everything but a unit of time. And if you're not from Philadelphia or you haven't lived there for at least six months to a year, it can be a very confusing thing if you talk to somebody who's using it all the time. Um, But they love it out there. I think it's even in the Maryland area, too. I believe they use it a lot up there and maybe even a little in New York. So tri-state area a little thing but when i was in philly yeah that that term was heavily used and i had to learn it quickly so i understood what was happening (laughs) we might have to pick that up here in the hudson valley so i'm in downstate new york we're known for our bacon egg and cheese sandwiches but you used to work as a fry cook at a chicken and egg sandwich spot what is a chicken and egg sandwich so first of all i will answer that but before I moved to Philly, I did live over the bridge in New Jersey, and I do like a pork roll egg sandwich, I will say. Oh, those I'm are good. I'm on that. God bless. <laughs> but, yeah, before my music took off, I was a cook. Shout out to Gary. He owns this spot on 12th and Sansom uh, in Philadelphia, Center City, called Hatch and Coop. Hatch is the egg. Coop is the chicken. <laughs> so we served breakfast in the morning, fried chicken sandwiches midday and throughout the night. And you would see me in there from 5.30 in the morning to like 4 or 5 at night, cooking, opening up the store, making eggs, making chicken. And it was a, it was a job, and it <laughs> paid my bills. And Gary, when my music was going off, let me take off a lot of days for label meetings and flights. So he's a beast. Shout out to Gary. Yeah, shout out to Gary for that. All right, my last question I got for you. (laughs) If someone comes to your city, which right now is L.A., what is the one thing they absolutely need to do? Okay, like, this is a dangerous answer. So I'm answering this as if it's not extreme lockdown right now. (laughs) But the restaurant, Night and Market on Sunset, even if you could order it on Postmates or something, is, in my opinion... One of the best restaurants in LA. My managers put me on these restaurants when I before I lived in LA. When I would fly out, we would go to dinner there. It's amazing. It's like it's like fusion street cart food, but like done upscale. It's just it's awesome. It's night market on Sunset. Super good. And if you're coming here for whatever reason, if you have to, because you shouldn't be, it's a global pandemic. But if you get here. 
Order it on Postmates or something. It's delicious. <laughs> All right. I know the first spot I'm eating at in L.A. if I'm ever out there. Well, thank you, Johnny, for hanging out with me and the Studio Cuts podcast. Hey, thank you, too. Make sure to check out Johnny's new album, For Abby, and their hit single, Sabotage. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7-96.9 WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.